Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting in Seoul. A string of defections from North Korea this year has included a greater number of senior officials and members of the regime's elite. Now, how to interpret that is the question. That is, whether it's a sign of the harshest sanctions yet on North Korea, causing instability in the leadership. Connie Kim has our top story. A series of high-profile defections from North Korea has garnered attention in recent months with more senior officials deciding to come to the South. The question is, is the Kim Jong-un regime becoming more unstable than ever, or are the latest UN sanctions the strongest on the regime thus far having an effect? Recent data from Seoul's Unification Ministry shows that while the number of North Koreans defecting to South Korea has declined overall, the education level of the defectors is increasing. 1,036 North Koreans have entered the country this year through September, down from more than 2,700 in 2011. At the same time, the number of defectors with a university degree or higher has risen from 5.7 percent to 7.3 percent last year. These numbers seem to be reflected in the latest reports of defections from the regime. A group of North Koreans who are working in China defected in April after the current UN sanctions on North Korea were announced as punishment for the regime's nuclear and long-range ballistic missile tests. In August, Seoul confirmed the defection of North Korea's deputy ambassador to the UK, Taeyong Ho. After that, it was reported that North Korea's vice foreign minister, Kung Seo Gung, was removed from his post and sent to a re education camp with his family. Most North Korea watchers say there are largely two reasons for the rise in defections. Externally, the UN sanctions against North Korea are getting stronger. Internally, North Korea is going through a generational reshuffle. When problems arise during the reshuffle or if there are difficulties bringing in foreign cash, people defect. Experts also say the recent string of defections indicates the growing instability within the Kim Jong-un regime, and President Park Geun-hye has responding by sending an open message of welcome to those wanting a better life. The number of defectors in South Korea is expected to peak at 30,000 next month. This represents a major challenge for the South Korean government, which will have to find effective ways of helping them adjust to their new lives. Connie Kim, Arirang News. South Korea is considering the possibility of imposing independence sanctions on the North before the UN Security Council adopts a new sanctions resolution in response to Pyongyang's fifth nuclear test last month. A report by Seoul-based Yonhap News cites a source saying Seoul could act separately to up the pressure on the North if the Security Council does not move quickly enough to adopt new measures. South Korea's foreign ministry had earlier said it's reviewing a set of independent sanctions. The ministry says any announcement of sanctions will be made at a time when they can have the maximum strategic effect, while taking into consideration the ongoing negotiations at the UN Security Council. The ruling Senuri Party has reopened a long-running debate in Korea about revising the nation's constitution. Senuri Party Chair Lee jong hyun reiterated today his interest in talks on the matter, and floor leader Chung jin Suk responded that he's willing to set up a panel to look into it. The crux of the debate is over the current single-term presidential system, which some claim has resulted in an imperial style of leadership. The presidential office of Chung Wa-dae opposes the idea of a constitutional revision saying it would divert attention from the administration's key priorities and trigger intense political wrangling. The opposition parties remain split over the issue, but supporters of a revision say the current document does not reflect the social and political changes that have occurred since the last change in 1987. Samsung Electronics has drastically revised its earnings estimates for the third quarter, with the new numbers reflecting the huge impact of its recall of the recently released Galaxy Note 7. The announcement was made after stock market closing time on Wednesday, with shares of the tech giant having plunged 8 percent the day before. Kim Min-ji reports. It wasn't better than expected, after all. Samsung Electronics revised its earnings guidance for the third quarter to reflect losses from its ill-fated Galaxy Note 7. The tech giant expects an operating profit of 5.2 trillion won, or roughly 4.6 billion U.S. dollars, for the July to September period. That's down from the estimate of 6.9 billion released last week. Sales were also revised down to just under 42 billion dollars. 
Based on the new estimate, Samsung's operating profit is down about 30 percent from a year ago, while sales are down over 9 percent. The revision comes just a day after the company announced that it will end production of the Note 7, in effect announcing that it will discontinue the troubled flagship phablet. The decision came after reports of at least nine replacement handsets catching fire, with incidents occurring mainly in the U.S. Nomura says the ditching of the Note 7 could result in a loss in sales worth some $9.5 billion and over $5 billion in profit. Though the termination means big losses for Samsung, the general consensus is that the company probably made the right decision. As Samsung is expected to launch the Galaxy S8 in February next year, the move is actually seen as a strategy to minimize the impact on the new phone, thus preventing the issue from dragging on to next year. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. And starting Thursday, owners of the Galaxy Note 7 in Korea can get a full refund or different models as replacements at the store where they bought the phone. Note 7 owners who opt for an exchange can choose either another Samsung phone or can choose another phone brand altogether, and they'll be given cash for any differences in the price. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. More to come on News Center in two hours' time. Bye for now.